I'm Patrick Byers, Horticulture Field Specialist with University of Missouri Extension, and I'll be presenting today's fruit report. In this report, we'll be talking about San Jose scale management, and then we'll conclude with some thoughts on the uh, scheduled activities in both fruit orchards and in berry plantings. The San Jose scale is indeed small but deadly. This is a pest that we are seeing a resurgence of in recent years, and it's a pest of tree fruits, primarily apples, pears, peaches, cherries, and plums, but occasionally it can be seen on berry plants as well. The uh, adult stage, which is a scale type insect, as they feed, they inject toxins. And the, uh, this activity can lead to fruit blemishes, but more seriously can lead to twig and branch death, and in advanced cases, entire tree death, as we see in this uh, peach orchard shot here as well. And it overwinters as a scale. Oftentimes the first evidence of San Jose scale infestation is blemishes on the fruit. And we can see here on both an apple and a peach that what is typical is a reddish halo or a reddish spot. And at the very center of that halo will be the actual insect itself. And we can see again on both the apple and the peach shot here, we can see the light colored scale at the center of the reddish spot. These spots can be evident as the season progresses, but they're especially noticeable at harvest time, and they're especially noticeable on uh, yellow or green apples. Evidence of San Jose scale infestation on the woody parts of the tree is a crustiness or an accumulation of scales, as we see on the right. This can be scraped off with the fingernail. Again, it's, it's quite noticeable in heavier infestations. Heavier infestations on the growing points of the tree can lead to serious fruit blemishing as we see on the left, but it can also lead to feeding areas on the foliage as well. And these areas typically are darkened or purple in color. San Jose scale may have as many as two to three generations per season. In Missouri, two generations are typical. The insect overwinters as a scale on the woody parts of the plant. In the spring, the males and the females emerge. The female is uh, quite sedentary, the male will fly from tree to tree. They emerge, they mate, and then the female produces up to 400 yellow crawlers. These crawlers are the larval stage of San Jose scale, and they crawl over the tree. Eventually, they will settle in, form a scale, and begin feeding. Monitoring for San Jose scale is quite important. Now, oftentimes, the first evidence of an infestation is fruit blemishes. And as we see in that upper picture, this is an apple at harvest time with a few red spots. If these are noted, it's important to go back to the orchard of origin and do a thorough examination of the trees. Pheromone traps may be used to monitor for male flight. These traps are baited and placed in the orchard at pink, and they're placed in areas of known infestation. The crawlers can be monitored using black electrician's tape placed with the sticky side outward. Again, choose branches where there's evidence of infestation and place the sticky traps at four to six weeks post bloom. Both the pheromone traps and the sticky tapes will need to be monitored with regularity several times a week. Management for San Jose scale focuses on dormant season oil applications and then if needed insecticide applications to target the crawlers. In the case of the dormant oil spray, this is a delayed dormant oil spray. It's typically sprayed close to bud break in the spring, typically in Missouri in early March. There may be situations where insecticides will be included with the oil spray, but the majority of the management, the control seen during the delayed dormant period is from the effects of the oil. Now the oil is a suffocant. It needs to be applied in enough quantity that it will completely cover the trees and completely cover any scales that might be present. Insecticide applications for the crawler stage are again, typically applied in the late spring or early summer as indicated by pheromone trap catches or sticky tape catches. Generally two applications are needed at 10 day intervals. As always information on pest management on fruits is compiled and found in the Midwest Fruit Pest Management Guide. This guide is available online at the website noted on the slide. Some general comments on dormant oil management of San Jose scale. This is a delayed dormant spray, best applied close to bud break. Typically in Missouri, that would be in early March. Very important to apply oil sprays when temperatures are above 40 degrees. Never apply an oil spray below freezing and try to avoid applying oil sprays when there is a frost in the weather prediction for the two following days. Apply dormant oil as a dilute spray under calm conditions for best control 
And it's very important to completely cover the trees. Very thorough coverage is important. The trees should appear wet after the spray. And this generally means a rate of at least 100 gallons of spray per acre. As the spray is applied closer to bud break, the rate should be adjusted down from the standpoint of the concentration of the oil. Here is information from the Midwest Fruit Pest Management Guide for San Jose Scale Management. Note that this dormant oil application also has the benefit of controlling European red mite eggs and certain aphid species eggs as well. If insecticides are added to the oil spray for San Jose scale management, there are several to choose from. Lorsban is a commonly used insecticide, but Superside and Diazinon are also labeled for management of San Jose scale during the delayed dormant period. Sprays targeting crawlers are applied typically in the second or third cover. And again, a range of insecticides are available, including Diazinon, Esteem, Admire Pro, Assail, Centaur, Movento, and Savanto Prime. Again, these sprays are applied as indicated by monitoring from pheromones for, for male trap catches or sticky tape traps to catch the crawlers. Now the crawlers are yellow in color, so they're quite noticeable against the black sticky tape. Now let's turn our attention to the calendar of activities in tree fruits, peaches and stone fruits. Harvest season is typically over by this point. There may be a few late peaches still coming off, but the harvest is coming to a close. Now is the time to monitor orchards for bowl activity and to start the fall cleanup and, and sanitation process in the orchard. In the case of apples and pears, harvest is underway. Again, it's very important to monitor for bowl activity. Monitoring for bowl activity, as we discussed in a previous video, is done through trapping or through visual inspection of orchards looking for bowl runs. Strawberry planting. September is the month to plant annual plastic culture strawberries. It's very important to plant annual plastic culture strawberries on time. Delayed planting, even by just a few weeks, can have serious consequences from the standpoint of productivity next spring. So try to plant on time. Matted row plantings. We are doing fall maintenance in a matted row plantings. Brambles. Primacane harvest of raspberries and blackberries is underway. Very important to maintain all bramble plantings at this point. Uh, Floricane brambles, there's the temptation to kind of set them by as we move into the fall, but it's very important, especially to maintain irrigation as needed during dry periods. Blueberries, again, irrigation is very important during this post-harvest period. Oftentimes our potential for cropping in the spring of the following year is determined by the care that we give these plants post-harvest. Recognize the flower buds are forming on blueberries in September and October. And if plants are stressed at this point, there will be negative consequences next spring during the harvest. Elderberry harvest is basically done as well. And again, maintain elderberry plantings. Remember that horticulture field specialists are distributed across Missouri. Find your county of residence and identify the horticulture specialist assigned to your region if you have any questions related to commercial horticulture. If you live in a region where there is an open position, reach out to the horticulture specialist that's closest to you. I'm sure they'll be happy to help. 